Well, it's that time of year again, and it's a time where we can go out inside in costumes and pester random people, all the while getting face-meltingly high off of an insane amount of candy handed to us by strangers. No, not Anime North, Halloween. And to celebrate Halloween, we're going to look at a bunch of scary-ass anime. No, it's not that the anime itself is scary to watch. It's that if you saw it on a store shelf, you'd crap your pants in terror and run the other direction. Our first offering this month is Ghost Sweeper Mikami. If you've never heard of it, then there's a reason. It's because the series itself isn't available in English in any form. Neither the anime or the manga have been translated. There do exist fan subs and scanlations, but they stopped early in the series' run. However, in 1994, Toei Animation made a film to tie into the series, which ADV did end up dubbing. And that movie is what we're going to be looking at today. So let's have a seat and sink our teeth <sighs> into Ghost Sweeper Mikami the movie something or other. There's a subtitle, but who gives a shit? Our movie begins with a samurai having a brief fight with Oda Nobunaga, who is defeated with a thrust to the heart. After beating Nobunaga, the samurai throws a spear into the air and... Kinda like Fox News' credibility, it just disappears. We then cut to our protagonist, Reiko Mikami, as she's using her loyal manservant slash submissive not-boyfriend Yokoshima as bait. No. No. It, it... it can't be! It's... Dear Lord, I've... I spent all this time carefully picking anime so I wouldn't have to talk about Wayne Grayson. Everything he's in manages to become dry and lifeless. He, just his touch can suck all the fun and, and talent out of an otherwise decent anime. How? I did my best to avoid him, but somehow he's caught up to me. Okay. That's it, my arch nemesis. You're going down. In my Shoot Fighter Tekken review, I talked about how good of a voice actor Dan Green is. Even in all the four kids stuff he's in, he manages to land a knockout performance. Wayne Grayson is the exact opposite. He's not talented like Dan Green is, he has one voice and that's Joey Wheeler. He's not even so bad he's good like Eric Stewart is. Wayne Grayson is just an annoying voice actor who half-asses everything he's in. Well, I've avoided him for long enough. So get ready Grayson because tonight I dine on talentless voice actor soup. So Mikami draws out the spirits and begins fighting them all the while Joey Three Eyes is getting gnomed and molested by ghosts. Mikami eventually lures them to a spot where she can fell all of them in one blow, but something here strikes me as odd. What the fuck is that? Um, okay, it might just be my perverted mind. That looks oddly phallic. Moving away from dick ghost, Mikami absorbs all of the ghosts and lights the paper she sealed them up in on fire. <sighs> Lucky fucking lighter. Later, Mikami is counting her massive stacks of money and... Yeah, if you haven't figured it out by now, she's greedy as fuck. Imagine Scrooge McDuck with a pair of double D's and red hair. While counting her earnings, she's speaking to a priest and his young vampire cohort named Father Karasu and Pete, respectively. Jesus, fuck Japan, do your puns know no bounds? They're talking about how spirits seem to be getting stronger lately, but the conversation is cut short by a spear falling from Mikami's ceiling and into her precious money. Turns out the spear belongs to Mitsuhide Akechi. Who is Mitsuhide Akechi? Mitsuhide who? Why, you don't know anything, do you? Let me explain who Mitsuhide Akechi- Joey, shut the fuck up. You can't even pronounce it right. Fucking, I thought Grappler Baki's violation of the name Ryu was bad. Anyways, Mikami explains who he is and the ghost of Mitsuhide Akechi hires her to exercise a particularly powerful entity. This entity just so happens to be the goddamn Nosferatu. Yeah, so... We have big titted anime chick with eyes so wide you could drive a fucking Mack truck through them, fighting the Nosferatu. Interesting. Careful not to let them bite you! Just one bite will turn you into one of them! 
Overhead vampire kick! In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, release yourself from evil. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust! One fight with a pack of zombie dogs later, and the Nosferatu is resurrected by Mikami's blood. Dear Lord, what a big ass mouth he has. I've seen big mouth bass with smaller maws than this man. So, obviously, Nobunaga must have an evil scheme brewing, right? I mean, he's considered the Darth Vader of Japanese historical figures. So, he has to have some sort of grand scheme. And what is it? He wants to drink the blood of all the exorcists in Tokyo so he can absorb their strength, which he will use to take over the world. Of course! You know, that's, that's, that's actually not too bad. I've, I've heard worse. So... Well, in the hospital, Karasu is rather saddened by the fact that, you know, being a man of the cloth, he doesn't exactly bring in the pussy, and decides to watch some TV. Which just so happens to be broadcasting a news report on a fucking zombie outbreak. Yeah, kind of major news, guys. The worst part is, is that right after, they just cut to sports. Like, nothing is even happening. Fox News as usual, I guess. So, get this shit. The Pope puts a fucking bounty on the Nosferatu's head, which naturally attracts a wide variety of exorcists to come and try and claim it. By a wide variety, I mean the average Joes you'd see in the TV series. First up is some Ganondorf motherfucker and his robotic compadre Maria, who, despite being an actual robot, is still more human than Megan Fox. After Ganondork is beaten, Mikami's rival Emmy appears, only to get her ass beaten by Nobunaga's Spider-Man, Ranmaru. All while this is going on, the government building that Nobunaga has taken refuge in is being transformed into a Zuchi castle. And while his castle is forming, Nobunaga is enjoying a large pitcher of blood and... Uh, okay, uh, dude? Dude? First off, they're called razors. Use them. I should, uh, probably follow my own advice, shouldn't I? Later, a bunch of zombies break into the hospital Mikami's at, and... Please let them eat Yokoshima, please let them eat Yokoshima, please let them eat Yokoshima. So some midget comes by in a helicopter and saves them, and they all go off to Azuchi Castle. And wouldn't you know it, never gets eaten by zombies. You had one job, Legion of the Undead. One. Job. Mikami arrives at Azuchi Castle and begins fighting Ranmaru. The fight is rather cool actually, pretty well done and entertaining, but there's something that really, really, really bugs me about this fight. And that is Nobunaga. You can hear him talking in the background as the fight begins, and okay, now I, I know what they were going for. But it just doesn't work in English. It just doesn't sound right. It sounds like he's singing, or at least trying to sing. Well, the fight ends on an anticlimactic note, and Mikami cleaves Ron Maru in half. He gets gored on the roof of one of the towers, and in a final act of desperation, donates the last of his power to Nobunaga. So, Mikami channels her inner Wally West, and manages to get to Nobunaga in less than 20 seconds. And the two shortly begin fighting. So it's you. It's amazing that you've come this I don't need your permission. You're just a rotten old ghost. I'm Ghost Sweeper Mikami Rico! And I'm sending you straight back to hell. Huh? Bull fucking shit! No one on Earth could land a backflip like that while wearing heels. I'm well aware this is a cartoon, but come the fuck on! Have a sense of realism! This isn't just screwing physics, that's screwing physics and its mom at the same time. I don't even think Power Rangers could fuck science the way Mikami Reiko just did. So Nobunaga goes all Darth Lord and shit on Mikami, only for her to slide under his attack, despite not having enough space to propel her that distance, but I can, you know, like before, fuck physics, and thrusts the spear through Nobunaga's heart. Turns out Nobunaga's faking his death, and he transforms into his true form, which is pretty generic and uninspired.
Mikami fights the tyrannical terror for a little while, but he finally gets the better of her. Before Nobunaga can deliver the finishing bite, however, Yokoshima steps in and cuts the fiend's wings off. I guess he just had a badass moment. Well... No, he didn't, because it turns out Yokoshima is possessed by Mitsuhide Akechi. And this plot point is pure bullshit. It is the most convenient writing ever. So, the Nosferatu can only be killed by a divine stone. And the only divine stone that Mikami had is now in pieces. But Mitsuhide tells her that she can make one if she just focuses hard enough. No. 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 That is cop-out bullshit. It really feels like a last-minute decision on the writer's part. I mean, okay, why the hell would Mitsuhide not tell her this sooner? He, he could have saved so many lives if he did that, but nope, he just beat around the bush. So Mikami turns her divine stick, uh, that's a penis euphemism if I've ever heard one, into divine stone and thrusts it through Nobunaga's other heart, injuring him. My god, that was a stupid fucking... Two hearts. Seriously, two fucking hearts. Mitsuhide drags Nobunaga to hell and the movie ends. Well, there's a... There's a post credit scene, like, you know, at the end of all the Marvel movies, but... Well, those gave us Howard the Duck, this just gives us more Wayne Grayson. Yeah, you're not missing much by me not showing it. Well, folks, that was terrible. Some decent animation and music and the writing marred with a terrible dub if he's story and Wayne fucking Grayson. Give me a French kiss, a nice hot French kiss, bring it on, a little smoochy smoochy, baby. Oh. Shut up, you fool. <sighs> <sighs> Something I didn't talk about earlier is that the writing is actually really good. I'd even say it's, it's rather similar to Joss Whedon's writing, as there's a lot of snappy banter between the characters when shit's going down. The thing that really kills it is how anticlimactic it all is. Mikami kills Ranmaru by just running up and cutting him, and the whole you can make a divine stone thing is the most convenient writing in any anime I've ever reviewed on this show. Well, we covered vampires this time, so it's only fitting that next time we cover our favorite flesh-eating ghouls. I'll see you then. Welcome to End Slate, everyone. I'm just gonna shamelessly plug two videos that I think you would really enjoy. Uh, on the left, go ahead and click on that one to see my reaction to Mike Tyson Mysteries. You get to watch Mike Tyson punch a dinosaur and uh, get to see how I react to that. And on the other side, we got two dudes playing Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD. Now, just between you and me, I'm only plugging this because that VG Viking bastards in it, and dear god, that dude is fucking sexy. I would suck his dick for a doll. Um, I mean, what? No, no, I'm not, no, 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 no homo. That's not a pretty homo. Thing. I it wasn't homo. I totally didn't have a conversation with myself, by the way. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, the schedule's been a little erratic. I've been trying to work on more reviews, trying to get more stuff out. Um, got a Loot Crate video coming up in a few uh, weeks, maybe? Yeah, maybe it should be whenever. Who cares? Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I think it was Ghost Sweeper Mikami. I think. It's either that or... Yeah, yeah, it was Ghost Sweeper Mikami. Because it's October! Fuck yeah, ghost! Woo! Halloween, spooky. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope you guys click on the two annotations to go to the other videos. And uh, have a good day, you know? See you later.